Did you want to um, explain to the audience how you made me commit one of the worst social um, uh, interactions that I I've had in years? I cannot believe that you're trying to put the blame on me. Let's go home. Welcome back to season two of Craftopia. <gasps> I am your host, Lore D.I. loves fries. I do love fries. And? Craftopia season two, baby. Are these available for people or? No, we... I definitely can't sell these. I definitely don't own the IP. So you just printed? Yeah, I made 30. Okay, so for our audio listeners, Jeremy and I are wearing these adorable Craftopia sweaters that I got made for our friends and family uh -huh, who are coming for a viewing party on Tuesday. Oh, that's what you got. Yeah. It's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like like a, it's like a memento. You, yeah. But you walk in and it's like, wear and you this. immediately have to put your sweater on. Got yeah. It. yeah, definitely super probably illegal and might get fired from HBO if I were to try and sell something. I do own the Instagram handle um, that okay. we just like haven't done anything with. I've, I've just like been setting on it to be like, hey, do you guys want this? Have you guys and done merch yet? Craftopia merch? Yeah. No. Oh, well, no. happy Tuesday happy or Wednesday Tuesday. or Thursday or Friday. But if you're watching this on a Friday, what are we doing the last three days? Yeah, I'm even sleeping. But you know what? Sometimes I like to stack them up. Some people are like, I don't want to watch. I want to be able to just like burn through them all. That's true. I, yeah. you know, you know, I'm a day to day though. Like I need to, I like watch my things on a daily basis. I'm a day to day bitch. Are you, do you listen to the same things at the same time? Mostly in the days? No. Oh. No, uh, there's like one, there's one video that I start with. There's one YouTuber who uploads every single day that I start with normally. Cause it's like okay. a 12 to 15 minute video. Okay. Um, his name is Def Noodles and he fills me in on the internet drama, the internet tea. And then you immediately come to me and go, babe, you'll, you'll never, never guess. guess. You'll never guess you'll what never I heard. You'll never guess. Usually the sentence is like, oh my God, you know what I heard on TikTok? You know what I saw on TikTok? <laughs> what was the one that I just told you today? Of the Oh, oh, I was telling Jeremy, I was explaining to him how um, submissive and attractive guys on TikTok, people will call them breedable. Um, breedable <laughs> with a B, B-R-E-E-D-A-B-L-E. -E -E. And what did I say? I think I'm pretty breedable and agreeable. You said you're agreeable and breedable. Which is- True, you got great genes. Hell of a compliment Got great genes, yeah. yeah. Breedable is for sure. So, and like, and so am I the one being breeded? Yes. Got it. Yes. Got it. Got it. it isn't it like a hundred thousand dollars to if you want your horse to mate with a, a stud that has won something? Oh my god, it's so expensive. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure. So expensive. Horse, horse, horse people in the comments, sound off. How much? How? It's, I think it's a lot. If I, think I were it's to over have, six figures, if I were to have a prize um, female horse and I wanted to mate it with your pride of of whatever joy male horse, yeah, I want to know how much I'm out. Mm, yeah, I think it's a lot. And do you think there's a world where, actually, never mind. Nope, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> well, I, I think it's actually they sell this, the sperm. Like, no, I think, they gotta go over there. No, 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 it's in person. No, I, no. Think, I think they sell sperm. I think they no. sell like just fucking like think, a special bottle for a special someone. And they just ship it to them? <laughs> or like, yeah, I wonder if it just goes on ice and they just like send it on over. Goes on, what do you mean just goes on? You make it seem so simple. It's like you just collect, throw it on ice and send it over. Well, I think about the people that I know who have frozen their eggs or frozen their sperm or whatever. And it's like, you just put that shit on ice. Do you know that it costs like a couple thousand dollars a year for like fridge rental space if you freeze your sperm? It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. It totally I, makes sense. I don't know. But imagine what... paying rent, like in your expenses when you're doing your taxes, like right. sperm fridge rent, $2,500. I mean, I hope it's at least like a, a, a tax deductible <laughs> rental fee. I feel like it's probably not. At least health savings account, minimum. I feel like it's not. Anyway, things that couldn't be less relevant. Welcome back. Hey everybody, <laughs> it's a big week for us. It's a big week. It's a huge week. It's a huge week. Go ahead. Why is it a big week? What do you mean? Your parents are coming in oh, like T minus Oh, oh my hour. God, yeah, literally I'm leaving for the airport. Like the moment that I take these headphones off, I'm getting in the car with Moose and going to pick my parents up at the airport. And another big week, we have a coffee table. We do have a coffee table and Jeremy was a massive hater when I picked it out and now he's a big fan. What? Okay. Big hater. I w okay. Big, the, big hater. I, it looked cheap as hell uh -huh. and looked shiny. Okay. And it got here and it's definitely cheap as hell. Definitely cheap as but hell. But not shiny. But not shiny. Yeah, balling on the budget. It's great. Balling on the budget. I, I just, no matter how much money I make, I will never spend bajillions of dollars on furniture that looks the exact same as other furniture. I will. Dumb. What do you mean dumb? So dumb. You know what I've actually been spending- I want it to last. Ugh, see, people people always say that they don't want it to last, but like some of the nicest shit that I have that's lasts the longest- Listen, Lauren, the things that you, you are a very, 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 very different breed when it comes to furniture because you change your fine mind every like 
I do. Two months. I do. Oh my God. So I'm definitely not redoing my office for like the like, sixth no time one, in my life. Literally anybody, <laughs> anybody who is remotely familiar with you, your brand, your content uh -huh. has seen the office. If you did an office flip video tomorrow, <laughs> I bet the click through rate would be a hundred percent zero because, oh, I've already seen that one. I already, I already saw that. No, no, it's actually really high because people are like, not again, you bitch. It's really high. I literally, I was vlogging cause I've been doing, I've been filming the process of the new, I'm not even kidding. I woke up one morning and I was like, fuck this. And then by that night I had sold half the shit in the room on OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace, which I've been spending a lot of time on. I've got a few stories from but it. But not as much time as Poshmark with Code Wild. <laughs> Code no, no, Lordy it's Lord DIY. 10? Ten? Lord, oh, fuck, no, I shit. Know. I don't know, but Poshmark, yeah. which you spend also far too much love time. Love Poshmark, on. yeah, love Poshmark. Yeah. But no, Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp have been great. So I sold a couch, which was great. And I, I, I just like, I'm a big fan of the upcycle. I love an upcycle and I love a a like reuse, pass along, uh, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's, I, it's not that I disagree. Yeah. I just like buying, I just like buying nice things that I, no will not need to be replaced until I don't want it anymore. Yeah. I mean, the one good thing too, like the benefit of buying really nice things is that usually the warranty is fucking bomb, except if you're fucking Thermador. But like, I think about restoration hardware and like the really expensive couch that we bought. Like I know that one, the resale price of that is gonna be really high. And two, if we have any kind of issues, like I know people that have gotten their entire couch replaced over something very minor. Do we, are we calling them in to get new um, cushion covers by the way? Yeah, no, no, I definitely yeah. have to. There's like a few things that have like actually ripped. And, but, and like, I'm sure it's gonna be so easy to but replace do, them. But why do we really need it? Um, because they're a little bally. No. Because they're a pain in the ass to clean. No. Because Moose has been putting ween goo on them. <laughs> because the dog has a ween goo problem. Do you want to explain this? I like don't even know how to go into detail about this. Maybe we've got a vet tech that works for us that or so works for us that Moose. That <laughs> um. Hmm. Goose. How to? So for everyone who's listening, you know what it, you know what it's like. It, this is this is like I hate that I have to use this reference, but it literally is like it's like precom. You said that in like a with an accent, like precom, precom, like precom, precom. It's basically like precom, but yeah. it's not like a sexual thing. Like he kind of just like after he goes to the bathroom has like a little bit of. Does goo. anybody else's dog just kind of like secrete? Oh fuck, that word is so gross. Just, secrete, just a little, <laughs> little goo, goo, little goo here like, and there. The things that we have to like, we have to wash our like Lauren and I aren't that careful with our couch. We're not like, we're careful. We're not that careful. Like yeah. we both eat things. We enjoy our couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not like, uh, yeah. But despite us <laughs> eating full on Thanksgiving, you know, uh, after a can or two, so I'm a little uh -huh. high and uh -huh. eating all the snacks in the world. Uh -huh. That's not the reason we have to wash our couch cushions no, as often. No, it's, 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 it's the puppo. Yeah. It's and it's definitely not as, as work intensive as like having two Huskies. I remember that, that was a nightmare. That that's, was just, yeah, that's not you're, just, you're that. constantly yeah. behind. Even yeah. when you're vacuuming, you're like, well, I can't get it all. You're behind. Yeah, you so, stay behind. Yeah, you stay, you stay behind. behind. Whereas Moose is um, shedding wise, not a problem. Yeah, he's good. But damn, that dog goose. That dog goose. Well, oh my God. Uh, quick shout out to the Chom Chom Roller. And I do know what that is, but if you could refer- Oh my God, the Chom Chom Roller is um, one, has the greatest name. Are, is, is it actually the Chom Chom Roller? It's the Chom Chom. Chom Chom. Chom Chom. Like Chom, nom, 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 nom. Chom Chom Chom, yeah, Got like C-H-O-M, Chom Chom. Chom. Roller. Mm -hmm. And it's like a it's like a fur picker rubber mm -hmm. and it's a little roller and that yeah. shit slaps. Okay. I also, this is like, this is how riveting our life is right now. I bought these um, dryer balls that have really good reviews on Amazon okay. that are specifically for like attracting pet hair. Okay. Cause when I was washing the cushions, there was like still a little bit of like moose furs kind of like ingrained into right. like the, the woven webs yep. of the fabric. And so apparently um, these little dryer balls are pretty freaking sweet. Can't <laughs> wait to give you an update on those. And for all nine of you left, <laughs> Eight of which are from Latvia for sure. Uh, it's good to have you back. We had two fun episodes last last. Oh week. my god, yeah, our last two episodes are slapping. Um, and I genuinely don't know. I really liked meeting Laura. Yeah, yeah. I've I've, I've only like had like brief. Um, right. Yeah. I've never. Well, I've never met her at all before. Yeah. And being in LA and working, it's close to your world, but not in it as long enough. I mm -hmm. feel like I've. I've got an opinion formed based off of seeing or meeting someone, even if it's across the room mm -hmm. for a lot of people, even if I'm not like friends with them. But Laura, mm -hmm. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't do a ton of research because it was super busy that day. And everything that came out of her mouth, I was like, you're fun. Oh my God, Laura was fucking hilarious. You're fun. Also just like, they have a great, they have great duo energy too, because of like their yes. podcast. And it's, I think we're actually going on theirs next week. Oh really? Yeah. Oh fuck yeah. It's gonna be so good, full M coverage. Manny's just so like, 
Manuel. <laughs> Manuel. Manny's just so well rounded. Manny is, he's, you know what he is? He's valedictorian. Oh my God. Also, so when I think of valedictorian, I think of the most well-rounded student because that's how Victor valedictorians were chosen in my high school. And then I remember that we had this conversation about how your valedictorian is just the person who has the highest grade. Yes. That is so wild to me. Cause when you said all of that stuff about Manny being like the most well-rounded, I'm like, oh yeah, that's like valedictorian status. But okay. Do you think yours is correct? No, but I will say that I do like mine better. <laughs> There, okay. should be, there should be a separate award for just being like the smartest, biggest brain. Your brain has the most faults, yeah, congratulations. Yours sounds like it's qualitative a lot more than it is quantitative. Definitely, yeah, it is. So who decides that, the teachers? I don't know. So because of a popularity no contest amongst like the the top 10 highest achieved individuals? I guess. That's, well, that's the whole fucking world like, is a popularity contest. What do you mean? Totally, but like, I mean, yes, it is. <laughs> I was gonna say. But like, <laughs> and by the way, I wasn't remotely close to being, I mean, I I, mm. I think I graduated high school with like a two point- Oh my God. Six or seven GPA. Okay. I just didn't do homework. I just didn't do it. You just didn't do it. Didn't do it. Okay. Guys, like- I, mean, well, I was so scared to like, I would never not do my homework. Like I would never- Well, I was so homework. like, I was ADHD, but didn't like, was not diagnosed, even though I- knew. You know what is fucking annoying though about people like you is that like, you're like, uh, one of my exes was like this too, is that they could just not do homework and like still do so well. Well, that's the only reason and, like, I got like a, a- And like, he could test really well too. Like right. he could test so well. I did the, the tests. So like, if I got like a B yeah. on tests, right? But didn't really do any homework. Uh -huh and did some decent quizzes and everything. It would come out to like a, a C plus average. Yeah, yeah, Baz was like that too. Like he literally was like homies with all the teachers, never well, did a, did no, a never did, well, that, okay, you, you missed me that right, one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was homies <laughs> with the ones that weren't stupid. Okay, so now, didn't have, now we um, see where there was a little bit of conflict with some of them. Well, I think as a young individual, I- um, We had, uh, we had authority uh, issues. Well, we just had like a, a chip that we're like, knock it off. Just go ahead and touch it. Uh -huh. yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you got to touch my chip? Oh, okay. Like, just, I see that for you. Yeah. I and, see that for you. <laughs> and it's so funny because it was so like, if only I had gone, Jeremy, what you could do is just like fake like you you don't um, hate their guts right. and probably you get them got, on your you team. Just, you just play the system. Just, just The problem is this. I was so mad that, that people didn't admit that high school was a game. Uh -huh. And that angered me. Okay. Like now I look at like, I'm just like, listen, this is a game. Okay, here are the rules. All right. Just play by it. Just play the game. It's not right or wrong. Yeah. It's not yes or no, it's a game. Mm -hmm. And I was so looking for people to be like, listen, it's just a game. You gotta show up, do you know, do what you can to get mm -hmm. here. And I would be like, okay, got it, I get it. Instead it was like, why is everyone buying this? This is dumb. Oh, right. This is stupid. Like, right. I'm not gonna need this. I'm not yeah. gonna like, just angry for no reason. Right. Yeah. You didn't wanna, you didn't wanna learn the Pythagorean theorem, but then you were like, why, why are we, why are we all okay with this? Like, I wish that someone had been like, listen, you're never gonna use this thing for sure, for sure. But I gotta teach you. Yeah. And you gotta regret, you're gonna do a test, all right? So it, as well as we do this week, we'll never do it again, but you gotta do it this week. I'd be like, all right, I get it, let's do this. And said, this is essential to you growing you up. You will use this, like you will cursive. Do you know how many years that I spent practicing cursive? <sighs> cursive, so many years doing cursive. Oh my God, you tests even on cursive. I, I can I probably can barely read cursive at this point. I can definitely still write in full cursive for sure. And I can I don't think I can write it. it. I could definitely read it, but I couldn't write it. Really? I definitely, I mean, I can still definitely write it. I can think about it, my, but. I mean, my name, but like, that's only cause I signed with it. Like I, I genuinely, yeah. half the time, you don't even need to sign in cursive anymore. I'm not kidding. Signatures look like just scribbles at this point. But my signature when I write in cursive mm -hmm. is illegible. So like, I might as well write it in print. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not to mention, when's the last time you like, with DocuSign. Yes, I say digital signatures. I haven't signed something in person in forever. I, the, the only time I've ever decided to be in person is if it's being then shipped to the, Somewhere the Middle East yes. or China. Yes. Those yes. are the two options. Yeah. That's it. That's what it looks so good on you. I'm so happy with my color palette choice. Listen, it, had I had the option to buy it, yeah. I would have. I know. I but know. instead it was handed to me. And, and um, also someone was like, so are we gonna think about having a blanket empire as a side hustle? And I was like, that's not the worst idea. I mean. I genuinely think Wild to Nine could be a life, a, 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 a crossover a cross, lifestyle yeah. brand. I think so too. Yeah. Um, when we get on we, Discord. Oh, we, also, we also have, we, so, okay. 
in in the in the spirit of like being really down with like gray hoodies, I feel like fall was like gray hoodie season. Not right. only is it gray sweatpant ween season, right. which we are now falling into our second year of official Wild to Nine gray sweatpant ween season. Right. Um, it's also like gray sweater season. There's something about yeah. fall. Also gray is just like one of the best colors for hoodies. Anyways, I spent a lot of time designing the perfect varsity crew neck with Wild oh, yeah, stuff. It's so cute. It's, it's like slaps. burgundy white and then on the gray base and it's a crew neck and it's so slaps. cute. Oh slaps. my God. You so know. waiting for samples on that, it's gonna be cute as fuck. Agreed. But it's rolling out, it's rolling out this fall, fall winter. Wow. Yeah. We're moving quick. I know. We should probably get to it. I mean, the blanket, the blanket I'd been working on for like a year. So like it's time True. to move on to the next project. Yeah. It's Otherwise time. we're gonna be dropped by a merch company. It's what? Otherwise we'll get dropped by a merch company. Right. They'll right, be like, right, you right, have right, to deliver right, right. lease merch yes. to keep the contract. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. yeah. And then the last thing we want to think we want to do is is lose Chris Vaccarino. Yeah. Our boy. Yeah, we don't want we don't want that to happen. I used to think my skin goals were unattainable. I've been on a freaking roller coaster over the years when it comes to my skin. Sometimes everything is going great and breakouts are few and far between. And other times my skin is like, hey, we about to mess up your day. Thankfully, I found Curology. Curology will customize a prescription formula with three active ingredients picked for you to tackle your skincare needs. So even if you aren't trying to tackle acne, you can get a formula that will help with fine lines, dark spots, occasional breakouts, or clogged pores. I am very down to slow down the aging process. And if I could find a formula to help with those fine lines, I am down. Curology matches you with a licensed dermatology provider who gets to know your skin. And if it's a good fit, you'll get a customized prescription cream to address your acne, fine lines, dark spots, and more. I have overcome my acne trauma, but it always helps to stay on top of occasional breakouts. Currently a big fan of the moisturizer that I've been prescribed. Take control of acne, dark spots, breakouts, or whatever your unique concerns may be with the powerful skincare treatment made for you today. Go to curology.com slash wild for a free 30 day trial. Just pay for shipping and handling. That's dot com slash wild to unlock your free 30 day trial. See curology.com for all the details. Is something interfering with your happiness? We love our Tillys and want them to always be living their best life and BetterHelp is here to help. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp has been huge in helping me through my anxiety journey. Some days it feels like leaving the house is just not an option. And with BetterHelp, you don't have to. You can set up weekly video or phone sessions with your counselor and never have to worry about sitting in an uncomfortable waiting room. You can also message your counselor at any time so you don't have to feel alone when you need someone to talk to. I'm a big fan of the messaging option because sometimes even hopping on the phone can be a little too much, but the messaging makes it really, really easy for me. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Finding the right counselor for you is extremely important in getting the help you need. We love this about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is also more affordable than traditional online counseling and financial aid is available. We love to see it. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash WT9. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash WT9. What else you got for us, Lauren? Um, So my show launched this week. Hell yeah, it did. Oh my God. I, I mean- Go, because I have my thoughts. So the first four episodes are Halloween themed. Then we've got another four dropping November 18th for the holiday episodes. Okay. Um, and so the first four are out and we binge the shit out of them. So we had a little viewing party with the two other um, judges and their significant others. And so I, we didn't watch any of them until Let's they take, came over. Can we take a moment Yeah. to talk about how incredible both of them are. Oh my and fucking God. I'm gonna go ahead and just say this. I don't, I spent 10 minutes with the judges last uh, from season yeah. one. I don't know them. They might be great. I, so just maybe it's just like, this is maybe just selfish or, or my own like a limited perspective. No, but also we, we've spent a ton of time with JP totally. and Crystal. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know season one judges. These judges as humans are hilarious. They're talented. They have the most unique and interesting jobs. Oh they my have God, I know. These, these crazy interesting backgrounds. Mm. They're, I mean, just, I, am obsessed with everything they bring to the table because it just makes this like beautiful, well-rounded show that like, I it, it, I can't wait for the other half and there has to be season three. Okay, we have to assume that there are people that that watch this podcast or listen uh -huh. to this podcast uh -huh. and have no idea you have a show on HBO Max uh -huh. Uh -huh. and that it's in season two. Uh -huh. So can we walk Love back the to- the promo. So HBO Max, <laughs> Craftopia, uh -huh. Uh -huh. executive producer, Lord DIY, and uh -huh. also host. <clears throat> That was for the caption person, executive producer, Lord DIY, AKA Lauren Riamaki. R-I-I-H-I-M-A-K-I. 
A lot of eyes. A lot of eyes. Yeah, yeah, a lot of eyes yeah. going on. Yeah, it's a lot. And we'd season one happened with children, mm-hmm. kiddos. Mm-hmm. Now they're season two. Mm-hmm. Go. Adultos. 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 Yeah. So it's three contestants, two challenges, $10,000 every episode. Um, I feel like everyone is familiar with that format. But essentially like with the transition to adults, HBO Max was like, say whatever the fuck you want. Like just go rogue, like say whatever the fuck you want. And then like, we can cut it down later in post. So like they let us be much more like scandy and witty. I mean, it's not scandalous. It's, it's just not like, scandy. It's- okay, but like here's the thing is that like they have a show now called F Boy Island, which was pretty good. Um, went, went really strong for the first eight episodes, but like, HBO Max is not known for their like Netflix-esque, like dating Scandi shows that are like reality and like sex, love, dating and stuff like that. Right. So I feel like they're um, having their their foray into, you know, like, uh, I don't want to say, I mean, they've always been known for adult entertainment, like not in the way that like porn, but like- HBO? HBO, yeah. By the way, has porn. Has porn? I'm pretty sure HBO and Showtime have porn. Really? I think they have adult content. Yes. Oh shit. I just meant like adults. I think it's just Showtime, HBO. No, there's, is that- cause I've seen it on like cable boxes. Okay. Oh, that like, makes more sense. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. I mean, a- I'm sure it's shot beautifully. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Like too high, highly produced porn. It's yeah. just like, oh. Like it's like two HD. I don't right. want to see this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no, it's two no. HD. Can I get an iPhone please? <laughs> so anyway, it's, um, we got to, we got to be sassier. It's really hard to tell a kid who's like 10 years old that they have like put their last two hours of heart and soul into a project. You can't be like, yo kid, that shit sucks. Like you just can't do that. Like, and you don't want to, like they're so cute and they're so pure and they're so talented. But with an adult, they, like- They've already given up on they've the already, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, they've, they've seen it all. They've uh-huh. been through it. And these are like, professionals, which is so fucking cool. So it's like adults who have like grown their profession outside of just like a hobby. So it's like people who do prosthetics on like horror movies, um, set designers, costume designers in Vegas that do like crazy, like custom mermaid costumes yeah. and stuff. Like it's wild. These people are fucking talented. Like, I'm so relieved that I'm not a judge because I would not feel fit to judge these experts because it's hardcore. Um, but overall, like I'm just so happy with how it turned out. I think season one, two, because it was our first um, time obviously doing it, like it's a little robotic. Like it's my first time ever hosting something. And I think all of it just feels like a little bit stiff because like, you know, I think as the episodes go on, we like loosen up, but like right. it's your first round doing it. Like that shit is new and it's hard and it's long, long days. I think it can easily, be, with the children in particular, it can easily become sterile. Definitely. And Definitely. with adults, it's easier to not have to be so tiptoey around how you normally would be. Oh, totally. We just yeah. fully got to be ourselves and like it's punchy and it's sarcastic and 100%. it's witty as fuck. Oh my God. JP just the one liners. Oh my God. I know. It's like I, people always joke about how like when you have a panel of judges, like who's the Simon, who's the Randy, who's right. the Paula. And like we very much had like, and you know what? They would go back and forth. And so every episode has a guest judge, but people would really go back and forth depending on like the vibes that day or who woke up and didn't eat their uh-huh. motherfucking Wheaties on who was going to be the sassier judge that day. Yep. But oh, to be fair, so good. looking at what JP and Crystal can do in particular. Right. Go ahead and be salty or right. salty. Oh my God. Go ahead and be shady. They a hundred percent have yeah. the grounds to be shady. So Crystal is like an installation experiential, like uh, just creative genius all around. Right. And so like Museum of Ice Cream, that's her brainchild. Museum of Ice Cream, the original one and like 29 rooms that Refinery 29 does. Like she is so, her, her brain is like on a different planet of yep. like talented. And but also then, the, the thought of being able to look at like, and I guess they both kind of do this, but yeah. Crystal in particular, like with Museum of Ice Cream, the first place I went to, I'm sure that before that installation got in there, it was an empty room in a shitty New York building. Oh my God, it was and, just a warehouse, I right. bet, with nothing. And it transformed into this- Yes. Like picture perfect, literally for picture, like perfect literally to for take pictures. pictures. Yeah of like transforming you into a thing that you you forget exactly where you are. I mean, she started a fucking movement too. Yeah. Like she started an actual movement because there was Museum of Ice Cream, um, something about Museum of Happy or play, Happy Place or something. There was Museum of Egg. Me and I went to that okay, one. It was it was okay, kind of well, dumb, the egg one. Oh, yeah. Happy Happy Place? Or happy Place? There were so many though, literally yeah. so many. I, Insane. And JP does every set in Hollywood that you've ever seen. That you've ever seen. Literally every set that you've ever seen. Mass yeah. Singer, that one. Kelly Clarkson. That one. Access Hollywood. That one. All of it. All of it. All of it. If, you, if it was on Literally television it. and it was a set, JP designed it. Yeah, HBO, Netflix, all he, of it. he owns all of it. Yeah, it's all his. It's insane how much he can just get done. Yeah. So anyways, I'm so, so, so happy how it turns out. You just shoot so much footage that you're like, fuck, like our show is in the hands of the editors and like the big time producers to like make this come to life. Cause you, yeah. it, like you just shoot so much content. Like we're shooting for like 16 to 18 hours a day. So it's like, you have to cut that down into 35 minutes. Like 
fuck. Well, also it airs now. And what people don't realize at the time is like, it was in the middle of COVID's like biggest lockdown. Oh my God, so yeah. Shooting it in a way that doesn't look like you're in the middle of a pandemic uh -huh. because it doesn't, it's not being consumed in the middle of a place where like, we're all like actively like, we don't know how to handle this is hard. Oh my God, yeah. No, it, it like exceeded all my expectations. Thank God, and I'm so happy about it. So go stream it. It's also on Crave in Canada, which I'm stoked about. I wonder if they pick it up because they're like, oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta like support the Canadian bitch or if they pick it up because they like it. I think both of those can be a yes. Well, no, I'm curious because I don't think they picked up Rosanna's Baketopia, which is like technically the same franchise, but right. Rosanna's American. So I was like, I wonder if they're doing this to like show Canadian support, which I am 100% here for. Crave, anyone at Crave, if you're watching, love you. It's not a Crave ad. What? It's not a Crave ad. This is a Crave ad if you want to pick up Craftopia. But you could also pay us to do an ad. And you then could we'll do it also again. pay us some God, money. That'd be great. Can you imagine if you get longer. paid to promo Craftopia? Oh my God. Well, one day, like I saw that all my friends are doing HBO brand deals. And I was like, I would like an HBO Max brand deal so I could just promote my own show. That'd that would be, be neat. sick. That would be neat. That would be neat. But look at us, we just did it for free. It's probably why they don't do it. Yeah. Anyway, that's really cool. Go watch it right now, immediately. Make sure you watch the whole thing. Don't you dare drop off halfway through and never finish. Also, you would never do that in a competition show. Like I would like, there was no moment. Like it just goes by like that. Like it's I feel like so quick. the first episodes I was like, yep. not that like drag on, but like these ones, they just go by in a blink of an eye. I'm just not entertained by kids. <laughs> I just like, You're like, so I basically just hate children. No, it's just like, I don't, that's not, so, you know, like the, 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 the person who's like, like, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're not just like, you're, you're not, you don't get the warm and fuzzies by like the cute. No. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, I think it was really cute. And like, obviously I have like an emotional attachment, but I also am not like, that's not my humor. And that's not what right. like makes me fall in love with the show. Right. I, I, and also I don't, I think that I resonate with things more when I, know that you're being your authentic itself and can yeah. like be more free with the way that you're just speaking. 100%. And whether it's, it, even though it's not scripted on the kid's side of the yeah. way that you interact with them, it still feels- The amount, like I'm a, I'm a pretty vulgar individual. And so me being on a kid's set is really fucking You're not a scary. vulgar individual. You just sometimes <laughs> say things that could be crass. Crass, okay, that's a good word, crass, yeah. that's a good word. Vulgar's yeah, too yeah. far. Yeah, vulgar, I'm not vulgar, yeah. But no, I'm definitely crass. And so being in the vicinity of children is very stressful for me because I feel like I just have to be very careful. It's like how I have to be around Jeremy's mother. You know what I mean? Like just right. being like reining it in and being like saying a sentence in my head before it comes out of my mouth and right. trying to omit swear words out of my vocabulary for like many hours a day is very stressful. It's funny, you edit your way, you edit yourself that way. I don't think about that instead. I think. I I just up the, like, I just really lay on like the sarcasm because kids don't get it. Uh -huh. And I just almost like have a conversation with myself. Like, oh, we'll just leave that there. Good idea. And, <laughs> you, and, that, you do do that and, with kids and you're like, yeah, yeah. I'm, and, and like that way you can almost talk to the parent through talking to their kid. Right. Cause you can just kind of like make fun of the kid. Yeah. But the kid's just like, yeah, I know. And you're like, you did leave that there. Yeah. That's okay. Not an option when you're only interacting with the child with a crafting. I Not cool. would be willing to give Actually, it a shot. It could be kind of cute though. Like it yep. could be funny because then the audience would be the adult that you're right. talking to. Yeah, that could work. That could work. But anyway, season three, I just, I'm available. Well, so season three, like the joke is that we're just gonna keep aging up. And so season three is senior citizens. Oh yeah. And then we'll take all of the winners from all three seasons. So we've got kids versus old people versus um, like middle-aged adults and young adults. Well, if we keep waiting, the kids will be adults. That's true, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, so we're just gonna go through the whole um, age cycle until we get to the the top and then right. we'll we'll bring all the winners back for MVPs. Did you wanna um, explain to the audience how you made me commit one of the worst social um, uh, interactions that I I've had in years? I cannot believe that you're trying to put the blame on me. You made a bold decision. You made a, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So. We um we are we have someone like new and new. Well, I'm, we, tr I'm trying to we have a new acquaintance, <laughs> a new acquaintance. I'm trying to figure out like how to like phrase okay. them without yeah being too specific. So we have a new acquaintance that we've seen for the last couple of weeks um and uh just once a week and so they were introduced to me just as like oh like he's a really friendly gay guy he's amazing and so I was like cool like love it and um so to Jeremy I was like he's a really friendly cool gay guy and Jeremy was like cool no 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 <clears throat> no the, you you're missing the the one the, the reason that it was brought up to me anyway it we do this thing where every single time I feel like Lauren does anything oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah anytime yeah, yeah. like yes. like like oh and I have three o'clock with Adam whatever his name is. And and I was like, oh, we're, what are you guys doing? And like, oh, we're gonna do this. And he'll come over for this. And like my immediate joke, never every single time Lauren does anything with like any dude ever, I'm just like, I'll kill him. Because it's a joke. It's a joke, right? Because you're protecting, yeah. And it, 
to be clear, I don't actually mean that. But the retort immediately back from that was, well, he's gay. And I was like, oh, well, welcome, Adam. And <laughs> so I'd already put it in my head that Lauren had, through my joke and answering my joke, said that he was gay. And so. And so, <laughs> but I didn't, okay. Mm. <sighs> This is not my fault. This is not my fault. You made a bold decision by um, applying gender to a specific question. And that was like, I don't think that I would do that until the person had confirmed that to me, like confirmed my thoughts to me. I, and so you're, you're putting this okay. on me. And by the way, and I have not done this in years, years. Cause must be I'm rusty. right with you. <laughs> So what did you say? You said some lines of like, oh. He brought um, up his spouse. his spouse. And you're like, oh, is your husband? Da, and, da, da, I da. Said, and I said, what does he do? Oh yeah, what does he do? But he hadn't confirmed. Um, yeah. He hadn't confirmed back to us. He said spouse. Yeah. He said spouse. Mm -hmm. And so you made a bold decision. I committed a fatal, this is, this yeah. was, this was, fatal this, error. This, I'm not right. I just think that I wouldn't have um, assumed it had you not told me a pretty specific hint as to- Okay, but like sexuality is a spectrum. And so if someone is gay, like there's obviously the possibility that could be bisexual as well. Of course. So I, I feel like I feel like you just you just went a little too bold. You went too rogue. Oh, I absolutely did. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And literally he corrected me and then like immediately went into like laughing about it and said, well, I'm bi. And like joked about it and it wasn't a big deal. Don't get me wrong. But there was a moment in my like head where I was like, I can't believe I just Oh my God, it that. happened and it was like, <laughs> my I, heart just about fell out of my ass. I mean, I say plenty of stupid things when I'm not thinking about it. When I meet somebody new, I'm usually thinking about it. Yeah. So it's just a quick reminder to myself to be like, oh, okay. Well. You know what? Even when you said that and he hadn't responded yet, I was like, oh, and I was like, oh shit, oh shit. And uh, mm -hmm. then our worst dreams came true. Our worst nightmare. I don't think it was the worst nightmare. It was more the worst nightmare. But, and um, it, was, it was like totally fine. Like it was, it was very I, much fine. I, right, yeah, exactly. It was just a, a, a reminder to myself yeah. that there's a, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Not on the same level. And I'm not sure which one might be. And that they're just both equally uncomfortable. But like, have you ever witnessed someone ask a woman if they're pregnant and they've just like gained weight? Like, I mean, I don't know if I've necessarily shit. witnessed it, but actually, no, I think I pretty have. Yeah, I think I have. I mean, I see it all the fucking time in Instagram comments. Yeah. I've gotten that before. Like literally everyone, you post a picture with the wrong angle and everyone's like, oh my God, you're expecting? Oh my God, how far along are you? Oh my God, prego question <sighs> mark? Like wh why were we learning Pythagorean theorem when you could be learning how to fucking handle social, social situations like that? I get it. I Don't mean ask women if they're pregnant. They tell you when they're pregnant. Don't ask people their sexualities. They tell you your sexuality. <laughs> Listen. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Oh my god! So, how much of the blame are you are you willing to take? Um, I'll take out of a hundred. Yeah, I would take twenty five. I will settle at sixty forty. I'll take twenty five. <laughs> Fair. Fair. You you took that information literally, and made decisions. Literally, it happened, and I immediately was like, "I'm going to remind everyone on the podcast why this is a dumb <laughs> idea." This exact moment that, that I'm- That was a this, teachable this, moment. The shit that I'm currently just standing in, yeah. that I laid for myself and then stepped in and then just sat, it just, it yeah. just <laughs> I was like, you know, the one of the things where like, it comes out, you just want to put it back in right your back mouth in. and you're like, you Right idiot. back in. How and then you were, you, you like overcompensated by how uncomfortable it was the rest of the session, I feel like. And you were like, so chatty to the point where I was like, babe, like you're hugging, you're hugging airtime of just like speaking. Cause I knew you were like trying to overcompensate and be super friendly. I was enjoying the session. Oh, well, I'm so glad. But- He's great. He was great. He's great. I learned a lot. <laughs> we learned a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> we learned a lot. The dirty little not so secret about the bedding aisle is that while cotton might be the most popular fabric for sheets, duvets, and pillowcases, it's also the most damaging to our planet. Even organic cotton takes its toll. That's why we are so thrilled to introduce you guys to Etitude. Made from naturally organic bamboo, Etitude's sheets are made without toxic chemicals and use 500 times less water than cotton. Plus, they're silky soft, so they're comfortable for you and the environment. We've talked before about how we are both pretty hot sleepers and waking up sweaty is fun for absolutely no one. Well, Etitude sheets wick away moisture and regulate your temperature to keep you cool and comfortable throughout the night. What more could you ask for? Unlike cotton, which consumes massive amounts of water, energy, and chemicals during production, Etitude uses naturally organic bamboo. Sleep better knowing you are sleeping sustainably. They also offer a 30-night guarantee, so you can try the sheets out, and if you aren't a fan, we 
which we doubt will happen, then you can return for a full refund. As you can tell, we have not returned ours. <laughs> we are telling you, Tillies, when we changed our sheets to Etitude, our sleep game has completely changed. Run, do not walk to change yours too. Right now, you can get 20% off your order plus free shipping when you visit attitude.com slash wild and enter our promo code wild. Remember, that's attitude as in eco attitude. Order today for free shipping and 20% off your order at attitude.com slash wild, promo code wild. I love our next sponsor so much. And for any of you who have been following me for a while, I'm sure you do too. Poshmark is an online reseller that allows you to shop and sell right from your phone. It's a free app where you can easily clean out your closet and sell items for cash. I'm about to do another one of my big closet clean out purges and post a bunch of new items in my closet. So make sure to download the app using my referral code, LoreDIY official, and you'll get $10 off your first purchase. On Poshmark, you can find Lululemon, Nike, Louis Vuitton for up to 70% off. There's tons of lightly used or brand new items with tags. Shop for your next event or vacation on Poshmark and upgrade your closet with new items. Oh baby, I will. No, I no, will. no, no, you're doing the selling. I will. You're selling. I enjoy being a buyer as well though. No, too. Being I know a buyer you is enjoy, super fun. But it'd be yeah. better no, no, if you selling enjoyed is selling. good, selling. but buying is also We're good. We're doing this for buying's selling. Good. It's Poshmark selling. Buying's good. No, po- no buying for <laughs> everyone else. <sighs> Poshmark is the coolest reseller of the best brands you can find. I always like to browse on there when something limited edition has gone out of stock or if I'm looking for a specific item that's out of season. Selling and buying are both so easy on Poshmark. When you make a sale, Poshmark sends you an email with the shipping label, you tape it to the box and drop it off at the post office or schedule a pickup. Listeners of Wild Till 9 get $10 off your first purchase. Just enter your invite code LoreDIYOfficial when you sign up. That's invite code LoreDIYOfficial. Uh, so let's talk about Squid Game. <laughs> A quick pivot over to a, um, would you, was it, is, that's not quite horror. Squid game? Squid game, thriller, I guess. It'd be thriller. It's thriller, yeah. Yeah, thriller. Yeah. So I feel like everyone has been um Netflix watching. would say that literally everyone. Do you see they're getting sued because there's like too much, um what is it? I think it's in Korea. Is it Korea? I think, I can't remember. I think it is Korea where there's like, massive internet outages or something because of like how much of the bandwidth is being sucked up by Netflix's Squid Game. I sent this article to you, you literally didn't read it. I knew, okay, here we go, hang on. Okay, here we go. Squid Game is driving so much internet traffic in South Korea that a broadband provider is suing Netflix over usage costs. That's dumb. Wait, is this real? Yeah, I'm reading on Business Insider because Netflix says it's there's a good chance it's going to be our biggest show ever. Um, the title is currently held by Bridgerton, which also slaps. Um, the network alleges that traffic from Netflix on its network has increased by 1,150 1, gigabytes per second over the past three years. Peaking this September, Squid Game was released on September 17th. I'm just shocked that any one like, piece of content could do that. Yeah. Netflix said, um, was like, go F yourself though, because they're like, it's not our responsibility. We it's make not. the content and you give it to people. Well, it's true. There's not like a, a limitation as far as like how, just because like a ton of their customers are using their service. Yeah. Like, oh boo, you're sad that people are using your service. Boo hoo. Also just like infrastructure. Also I, th- I thought South Korea's like internet was in like fantastic shape. I thought they like had better technical infrastructure than we did. Um, I have no idea. Probably in Seoul and nowhere else. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't know less about South Korea. Yeah. Um, also, I have been recommended Alice in- Wait, are we gonna talk about the actual show? Or are we just gonna talk about the FC, or like the, <laughs> the, 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 like the current lawsuit going on over bandwidth? Okay, let's talk about it, let's talk about it. I mean, I, I think- South, We loved it. Well, I just think South Korea in general is probably like 20 or 30 years overdue for the recognition for the content and media that's been like pumped out. Oh my God, yeah. Between all the K-pop groups that are just more or less taking over the world. Uh-huh. We have a buddy We have a buddy who manages one or two of the groups and I'm not kidding, every other day, I look at his Instagram, mm-hmm. Taylor talking about you. This guy has another, oh, we broke another record and we're oh at the God. top of the billboard yeah. charts for another pop track. And just like, how many times can you like actually sell, sell, not stream, sell millions of copies of something before it's even released? It doesn't happen anymore. It's so impressive when people can sell, when they can actually sell. Well, like the music's good. The branding's good, the design, the lighting, the everything that they do is everything's like just so like picture perfect mm-hmm. and it is so like aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. But whatever they're doing to sell records is working. So keep it up. And also remember Parasite? 
Loved two it. years ago, fantastic. Squid Game was fantastic. Yep. There's just something different about the writing and the way that they tell stories than what we do in America. And I love just being like a, a, a fly on the wall, just like only being able to read the subtitles, but still thoroughly enjoy. Oh, okay. So this is a point of controversy that I've, I've listened to this debate a few times on different podcasts. What do we okay, got? So Squid Game specifically, um, dub versus subtitles. Anyone who watches dub needs to watch it again. That's, that's I, what, that, ridiculous. Completely agree. Ridiculous. I completely agree. I just, you cannot, Watch. I just don't. I just. I don't think you can get the same experience. Also, like, wh- like it, the the I. It's. Uh, it, I. I can't even. I can't even. Like, it's like it was so good with their voices and like it, it just throws off the entire energy of the acting when you're listening to something that fully does not match up and also right. that you know that is not. It's like this is not how it was performed. Also, every time they like, I hear the voices that they pick. I'm like, was this the best option for this person? Yeah, really? I know. I know. This makes no sense. We watched like 10 seconds of it dub because I think it actually, I mean, and this was another point that another podcast was talking about is that on American Netflix, sometimes it'll play Squid Game just automatically dubbed, like it's in default dub. So yeah, I have all those settings like off auto on the yeah. manual, which is why ours doesn't do that. But mm. I'm sure for some people, they just think that was Right, the, exactly. The That's it how worked. they thought yeah. it was just like offered up on the platform, yeah. which is really unfortunate. There was another another article too. And I can't remember if this pertained to like the captions or the dubbing that like the meanings and like the performance deliveries of like what they were trying to relay kind of got lost in translation. Right, they were saying that the, whatever the subtitles were was like yeah. really bad and it didn't do it justice. I thought it was great. I enjoyed every second of it. I don't know oh, how it oh, could be better. Oh, it was captions. It was, or, um, right. it was the closed captioning. What's between captions and subtitles? I don't know. There's definitely a difference, right? I think one might be to transcribe something from one language to another, translate something from one language to another. And, I and wonder, the other one's just- I think actually when you're listening in English, right. dubbed, the closed captioning would be the written version of the, maybe I'm totally wrong. I have no idea. Do you want me to Google it so we can debunk this right yeah, now? Yeah, let's do okay, it. Okay, yeah, so instead of just like- Us just- Just spewing false information. For then people on TikTok, okay. like, it's this, Close and you didn't know this, you're stupid. captioning versus subtitles. I get it, Jimmy, I don't know everything on this, okay? So you can comment on it later. Okay, so subtitles assume an audience can hear the audio, but need the dialogue provided in text form as well. Meanwhile, closed captioning assumes an audience cannot hear the audio and needs a text description of what they would otherwise be hearing. Okay, so that still doesn't quite differentiate which one would be playing though, if we were watching in Korean. Subtitles. Right, it'd be subtitles? I think so. Cause I actually think it's two different settings when you're going through like, do you want captions or do you want subtitles, right? Cause it's like closed captioning, right? I feel like that's a setting or you can do subtitle setting, right? Oh my God, fuck what? This is, I can't believe I we watch so much TV I don't we have know. no idea. No, no, no. I think it's subtitles. No, no, no. Oh God, anyway. Squid Game, loved it without giving any spoilers. How did you feel about the ending? Um, It wasn't where I thought it was gonna go, but I liked it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there was some weird choices. I, I it, The last episode felt like it didn't even try to wrap a lot of things up. Therefore- Well, and like the worst part is that they didn't try and wrap a lot of things up. And then there's there's like kind of talks to do a second season, but there's no story written. So like it well, would be a long time. Well, they can put that together really quickly. That, I know, but like, it's so intricate that I think yeah. that it would, if they wanted to do it right. And the writer seems like he's like really talented. I mean, he's been trying to get this thing greenlit for what, 10 years? 10 years, Isn't yeah. That fu- Classic case, like the only thing that was standing in the way of him doing exactly what mm-hmm. he was able to do is people's like unwillingness to try to create something that they don't have a working model for. Right. I mean, Deadpool was the same way. Remember how right. long that took to get made yeah. as well too? Yeah. Well, and also like, it had been, like, been kind of made. I When we went back and watched all the old X-Men yeah. and saw Ryan Reynolds in an X-Men right. movie doing Deadpool, but not really the same. <laughs> really it was yeah. hilarious. Oh my God. Yeah, that was so funny. And I love that they had like the balls to be, I love that they had the balls to say, we know that we've already kind of released the image and who this is, but we're gonna just double down on a completely new look at it and actually change the whole thing. How many people do you think on Halloween are going to be Squid Game characters next to us? One or two. Yeah, yeah. No, I can't wait for all of us. We basically can recreate the show at this point between how many people are gonna be in the blue jumpsuits and then how many people are gonna be in the red jumpsuits with, uh, I think you're, I think I got you Triangle Man. Okay. I got you Triangle Man. I think Squid Game is gonna make a fantastic board game. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's some really great Instagram filters. We have to like blink to jump with like the and then you die. 
Do do da. That one. Yeah, and then pew. Oof. Yeah, I that know. Would scare the shit. Anyway, out. it's a great Instagram filter. We have to blink to move, and then if you blink while the she's turned around, you die. You super die. Right. Great filter. How nice. <laughs> no, I just uh, that's it's just good different weird television. I like it. Oh, also there are some bops like that. So like that, that like childhood doll, um, little tune or whatever from that, that first game. Da, ba, da, 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 da. Oh my God. People are making the sickest beats out of it. It's such a good little sample. It's yeah. such a good little sample and it's so good. Literally on TikTok it's like, and then it drops and it's so good. Did did you want to make your own? I mean, no, okay. no, no, no. And I wish you could play them without getting demonetized, but, but. there goes Hard. It yeah. goes so hard. Anyways, so I can't wait that, to uh, yeah be be just alongside um all of our fellow squid gamers. Squiddies. 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 El Squidos. Yeah. 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 Do have you? Do we have any friends that watched it and hated it? Um, I texted my mom this morning and she said that they are hate watching, but they've only watched one episode. So I was like, mm, just are they watching it time. dubbed? No, they're not the dub kind of people. They watch okay. they watch all of their shows. Sometimes even like they'll watch captions if someone's got like a thick accent like how I do. <laughs> Lauren, anytime she watches anyone British or anyone Southern or anyone really- Even like Ted Lasso, there's just like, okay, like Jamie Tart's accent versus the well, rest of their that accents. Br that was British and Southern. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it just, sometimes I just need- I think the majority of the people that I work with on a daily basis have an accent. Right. Whether it's from Asia or from Europe. I wonder if you sound like this to them. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but is that you, not, did I not nail Kentucky right there? You did not nail the Kentucky right <sighs> there. Um, if only Laura was back. But no, if only I, Laura was back. Yeah, you don't. You kind of struggle with the accent thing. Oh yeah, I really struggle. Yeah, yeah, really it's struggle. It's cute. Yeah. Um. So your parents are gonna be here in like an hour or two. Yep. You excited? Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm excited too. Also, like we we've been like cleaning and organizing and like even doing just the podcast room and all this stuff for I think weeks and a lot of these projects are starting to finally wrap up. I mean, I think it's good when someone comes to visit that we like feel that we need to make our house really presentable because it yep. kicks us in the ass to like get things done. Forces you to yeah. be an adult. Yeah, hundred percent. Forces you to like stop neglecting that pile of shit in the corner that you've been ignoring for the past like six months. You even forget the pile of shit because it's- Because you've just walked by it so many times it, at this it's point. It's become decor. Yeah, it's become yeah. decor, which is part of the house. Which is not a cute look. No, it's not a good not look. Not a cute look. It's not, so it's not, yeah. My dad hasn't been here in two years. I haven't seen your dad in two years. Oh my God. I know. Holy shit. Well, a year and three fours. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It would have been, no, it would have been two years. Cause the last time they came would have been oh, in fall. Christmas. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So a year and yeah, yeah, 75%. Oh my God. So Moose hasn't seen my dad also too for that long too. I know. I know he's like really stressed that Moose isn't gonna remember him. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. No, definitely not. The only not. thing that'll be a problem is Moose just generally not caring about anything that's not food, but yeah. there's that. I mean, yeah, that's that's just a, that's an everyday occurrence. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like almost half of Moose's life. Is food. How long it's been since he's seen him. Oh, <laughs> but also food. Yeah, but everyone that Moose met as a puppy, I feel like he's got a very special like uh, He's not very with choosy them. either. No, but like, like if you think about like my assistant who he's known his whole life, if you think of like Lana and Mia who he's known his whole life, he's got very like special affinities to them versus some of the people he's just like met. You the know, people that here he can and physically and emotionally walk yes. on the most, yes. he has a real connection to. Like Lana literally lets him do a piggyback. Airplane! And, and then we run around the living room screaming, airplane, airplane. Yeah, just like that. Just like that, yeah. And so Moose really loves people who will and, allow And Mia lets that. Moose lick food out of her mouth. And step on her throat, her esophagus, yep. and like yeah. crush ribs and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. all out of love. Yeah. Out of absolute love. It's so different and crazy and weird to think that having parents come over when you're an adult mm -hmm. and hanging out and living with under the same roof is so different than when you're a kid. Oh my God, yeah, 100%. It's so different. It's entirely different. Well, also like your relationship when your parent controls everything that you do and like is the source of your money and your right. decisions is very different than it is now. Isn't it funny that like that's almost the, I mean, maybe it was just for me or that's a normal thing. Mm. The, the reason I feel, it seems like parents and their children are able to ha like cohabitate without having to like be on, 
be at each other's like throats once the money thing is figured out. But until then, it is nearly impossible. 100%. For me anyway. 100%. Right. Well, I think that parents have the, not entire authority, because obviously like respect your children. Right. But like parents have the, I'm just gonna use the word authority, but they have the authority when they are providing for you in every single way, like there should be some level of respect that you give them because right. like, you know what I will say is that like, this has given me a new perspective that I had never thought about before. Um, there's this mom on TikTok who um, is just like, does like different types of parenting right. and talks about her experience with it. And she's always like, my kid didn't choose to be brought into the world. Like I made that decision for them, which is an interesting way to look at things. So I was like, oh shit. I was like, that is a really interesting perspective. Like, yeah, they didn't choose that. So it's like, you chose that for them. And then now you have to allow them to make decisions you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, I don't know. You can, you can like take that as, as it is and well, think about it. I guess I'm more thinking to myself that my parents didn't really choose to bring me into the world that much. So Why? that doesn't really apply to me, but I get it. Yeah. I, get, I get what they're coming. I get, I get that, that angle. So a planned pregnancy is, it right. can take on that angle. Can planned take on pregnancies. <laughs> Who does those? Oh my God. I mean, everyone that I go to high school with right now, planned pregnancies all over my Facebook. It's true. Literally, I was it's on true. Facebook today, like for this whole yeah, Facebook marketplace thing. And I was they like- should call it the PP book. This is just, this is just fucking baby book. Nothing. Baby no books. No laugh at PP book. What's PP book? Planned parenting book. Planned parenting book, PB, PPB. Planned parenting book. So book. they're supposed to Facebook, PP book. It's, never mind. Plan, no, but Planned Parenthood is where you go to- Planned Parenting book. Planned Parenting, got it. I think that's too close to Planned Parenthood. And that's a controversial subject. subject. The, right, but yeah, just we'll move fast. The yeah, joke we'll didn't move, land. Yeah, it didn't it's, land. It was it's, a thinker, it's okay. stupid. It's okay. Stupid, Yeah. stupid. But yeah, Facebook is just babies. And like, I will always say this forever and ever. Whenever I see someone that I went to high school with who's having a baby, I was like, oh damn, like teen mom, fuck. <laughs> it's like, been a long time since you've been in high school. I haven't been in high school for a very long time. A decade. A literal decade. A decade. A literal decade. And that was the decade. end of it, and that was, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. And so there are planned pregnancies uh, very often now. And well, I just think there's such a, a weird like relationship when you go from being in high school, when the idea of having a sleepover with your significant other would be in and of itself, just so off the table. Oh, my parents would never. I mean, my mother- Not would, an option. I mean, we, she didn't know about any of them, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the, that Absolutely was just, not an option. And then you go to college and I think your parents assume you're kind of doing the worst, but also hope that you're not doing any of the worst. Yep. And then they're just kind of thrown a situation one day where they have to either like expect and and just be okay with it all or try and fight it. And then eventually they just give in and then eventually it just all works out and then you cohabitate just fine. It's, just, it's a weird just layer of events. I feel like though, if I were to move back in with my parents, right. like I wonder if it would be too easy to fall into old habits though. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And so like, I, I just feel like when you're, I, I don't I mean, I'm sure there are so many people that make it work. You know what I mean? They're saving for yeah. a house and stuff like that. It's not to say that those scenarios like don't exist and are not thriving. But I think personally, like I think that my parents and I get along so well in our current conditions and we have such a great relationship, but like, I would be curious to see how that would change if we were to all be in the same household again for a long, long amount of time. 1,750. That's how many miles between me and my mother there are currently. Uh -huh. And I know that number because that's the exact number that makes our relationship sing. sing. <laughs> yeah, because when I see her, I've missed her. She's it's missed great. me. Yeah. I, yeah, but, but also my mother and I, like just, we just look at life and the way that things are, should be, how they operate right. and, and our, just take on it. And we have two very different approaches to almost sure. everything, yeah. despite having a lot of similarities as well. And so when we're both as opinionated and stubborn as we are, when the other person's doing something wrong, eh, quote unquote wrong to get to a you know similar situation or similar answer, I think it just like causes all these unnecessary fights that just don't exist when you're 2000 miles apart from each other. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys get into conflict sometimes even just being 2000 miles apart. So it's like, put you under the same roof. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes she's wrong and I, you know, it's just- uh, Yeah, I can't, I just it's just, yeah, you just sometimes. <laughs> no, I just, I, going back to the whole high school and game thing in uh -huh. particular, my mom thought you get, you know, good grades and you do this because that's what you're supposed to do. Mm. And I'm like, right, but why? Well, because that's what you do. And I'm like, right, totally. But why do we do that? Oh my God, that's like when a toddler starts asking questions like, but why? Right, like, but why? I understand that that's the idea of it, but like, what if I don't? 
Well, then you're not gonna be successful. You know, I'm just like- I mean, yeah, but that's like how they were raised. Like that's how totally. that generation was raised is I that know. you just like have a nine to five, you work somewhere for 30 years, you get a pension, you get your retirement situation set up and then you work there until you have grandkids and you spend time doing that. To definitely, <laughs> I, I see that, absolutely. Yeah. I just don't think there's ever gonna be a time where I'm gonna have a job more than five years ever. Yeah, I, well, I just don't think that that's like, that's, I mean, obviously it is still very realistic. And I was explaining to someone how like you kind of had like a fork in the road before this last job where you could like potentially go and work for like a big media conglomerate. So like a Facebook, right. uh, you know, whatever, like one of those big ass like tech companies, or you could go do something that's a little like riskier, but like a little cooler yep. and just like much more fast paced. I always take the risk. Yeah, but you you were thinking about it though. I thought and about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah you definitely well, thought about it's it. It's like just, you can, when you work at one of the big just juggernaut tech companies, juggernaut, you can try a ton or you can just coast on by yeah. and it's easy yep. to just kind of fly under the radar and just do what you want to do. Yep. But also you have a boss who has a lot of bosses. You do a lot of work just because you, that's what you do. And that's the thing that crushes my soul. I don't like working to, to just fulfill somebody else's deliverable. I only want to work on the things that are like going to like, push me forward. You would die in that environment. I know you'd be so unhappy die. in that environment. Dead. You would die, yeah. Would hate it. Not to start off another sentence like this, but I saw this TikTok where <laughs> it was this guy who worked at, I can't remember if it was Google or Facebook. It okay. was one of the two. Worked either Google or Facebook. And so he lived in this like, just like pimped out van. Like it was a really, really cool van. And he did his like, like follow me through a day. So he like wakes up in his van. He like answers some emails. He packs his bag to go to work. He's at the gym by like 6.30 or whatever. This sick gym. I think it might've been Google. I remember they had branded weights and I'm trying to picture the logo on the weights. Oh, he went to the gym at, at his office? At his, at, yeah. Well, cause like oh, okay. they, those tech companies have like compounds, like it's a whole village. But they would have, when you're up in San Francisco, you have to. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. And so his thing was like, he went to the gym, he got an hour long workout in, he had like this bougie ass shower. He went to the cafeteria, got a bunch of free breakfast cause all your meals are free. Like it was fire. His breakfast looked like wonderful. Right. And then he went, did some work and then they played some ping pong, played a little bit of basketball, had another meal that looked bomb. It was like some kind of pho, I think. This guy must for sure be a product manager. Oh yeah, I'm for sure. sure a product I'm manager. sure. And if you're a product manager out there, yes, that, that was intentional shade. And then he went on like a little bike ride around the oh, campus. Oh, product manager for sure. Did a little shopping. But I've also heard that they have crazy things like they have um, like on campus, like dentists and doctors and laundromats and daycare and pet sitting care, like all the things that you technically don't ever have to leave. I mean, if you have a compound with, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 people who work mm -hmm. there, who are mm -hmm. all making well into the six figures oh, and yeah. who are all like supposed to work minimum, you know, eight hours a day, but oftentimes goes to nine, 10, 11, 12, mm. all those things get used. I was like, there was a debate in the comments people being like, wow, this is such a sad life. Like all he does is like live to work. And then other people that were like, damn, this guy is so smart. All he's doing is like paying for his own little space in bed to like store some clothes and like sleep at night because like- Everything else is taken care of. If you're a single dude, I guess you couldn't really bring a date home at the end on like the weekends. <laughs> you would have to find, a, you would <laughs> you'd have you'd have to find have, the right date. The right person would yeah. find that lifestyle incredibly attractive. And That's the right, true. And Everybody else. If you, it was a if it was a techie girl who yeah. lived a similar lifestyle, you guys could go. You maybe you could join vans. Join vans. You could join vans. Wait, what if we bought a van? Not to start another sentence like this, but I saw a TikTok. Oh. <laughs> I saw a TikTok. We need like an, I started where, a TikTok counter. I know. I was. I saw a TikTok. Sometimes people will do these like TikToks where they like treat the app as a dating profile. So they'll be like, "Oh, this is my name. This is how tall I am. This is what I do. This is my dog." Like. This is how old I am. This is where I live, right? Okay. And it's like kind of weird, but whatever. It's like kind of like a popular thing. And so this guy was like, I live in a van. I travel. Here's my name. Here's my height. Like, and everyone in the comments was like, dude, not the fucking time. I think his name was actually Brian as well too. And he like lives in a van. They're like, Brian, read the room, buddy. It's not the time. It's not the time. Read the room. But Brian just doesn't know. Brian doesn't know. Brian doesn't know. Brian, but if doesn't Brian know. has TikTok, Brian knows. Brian knows enough to know that it's not the time. It took me a second to figure out what you were getting at. But then again, I'm also not making an elevator pitch with my height, my ASL right. um, on TikTok. Yeah. Remember ASL? Age, sex, location. What's up chat room? Let's go. Look at us. Look That's at gonna us. make a lot of sense to people or no sense Do you remember the, the website called Hot or Not? Yes. How fucked up was that? 
you know, things just flew under the radar back in the day. How fucked it? Like, I remember like submitting photos and being like genuinely affected by okay. like how people would react. But also hot or not was just the precursor to the like. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's, it's just being framed better. Yeah. Or differently. Or different, differently, yeah. differently. Cause it's more like a, like a black or white answer of hot or not. Well, one's hot or not versus like, I have, I approve of this. I or support, like, I condone. This thing that it just flashed in front of my eyes, I I felt positive about it. Right, right. Right. And I don't mind if people see that I feel positive about it. Right. Yeah. Oh God. My step between, um, or was it, it would have been, it would have been during Facebook. It was not MySpace. Also, how fucked up kind of was it that MySpace had top eight and you had to prioritize and rank great. your friends? I think it's fantastic. <gasps> That's terrifying. That's terrifying. I can't imagine doing it today. Oh my God. I mine would just be hidden. I remember there was a guy that I had a crush on and I definitely put him higher in my top <sighs> eight that like, then he should have been, but I wanted to be like, oh, like I want him to be excited that like I put him in my top eight. Did it like notify you that you, that you were in? No, I don't think so. But I would just you be like hoping that you would lurk someone's profile. Yeah. And so I'd be like, oh, he's going to see him in my top eight. I oh. also have a bomb ass song. Right, right, right. Like buy you a drink by yeah, T-Pain. Yeah, by was, T-Pain, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Right, totally. How did it go? Did you end up? No, Getting some? no, no, didn't work. Did you want to call him out? No. The one that got away. That's okay. Peter, could have been you. Could have been you. Could have been you sitting right here, could've Peter. Could have been you. Yeah. I kind of think that Raya, the celebrity dating app, or I feel stupid to call it a celebrity dating app. It was a celebrity yeah. dating app. Now it's just, just uh, uh, oh, you live in a city? Yeah, great. Okay. Come on in. Um, but I feel like Raya, the dating app, took that piece from MySpace. I, I'm convinced that they were like, what's the soundtrack that you want to play to your profile? Who did that first? Oh. MySpace. Yeah, I can see that. MySpace did that first. I can see first. that, for sure. And they didn't even give credit to Tom. Tom. I think Tom wants nothing to do with Silicon Valley. What do you think Tom's doing now? He's a Just photographer. Driving? Oh, He's a really? hobbyist photographer. Aww. Yeah. Did he make a shit ton of money on the exit? I think it was like a quarter billion. Oh, Yeah. Okay. Or it was a nine figure amount that he made, I'm pretty sure. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Right. I can't, did so, AOL buy my, who bought MySpace? I can't remember. Oh so he's set. So he can just go and take photos of trains and planes and ducks and stuff, however, whatever he wants to take photos of. Uh, correct. Wow, I love that for Tom. I wonder what he looks like now. Tom from MySpace, American entrepreneur. Oh my God, he's 50 now. What? Oh, you know what? He looks exactly the same, you know? Tom actually did not age um, that poorly. He looks kind of the same. Do you think he's still Tom um, from MySpace on Instagram too? Probably. Tom from MySpace, no, Tom. Hmm. Okay, well, this will be something that I can dive into later. Wow, he aged pretty well though. Good for him, rich and aged well. I'm sure he's set. Good for Tom. Good for Tom. Justice for Tom. Good for Tom. Is Tom from MySpace still rich? How much did Tom sell MySpace for? What happened to the Tom from MySpace How much did he sell for? Do we know? Um, oh, I think it was like a half a billion or something. Cause it, it was way down. $580 million. Wow. That's insane by how big that was at the time and how small that is yeah, now. 2005. Yeah. Wow. But not as small as Tumblr just sold for. Oh yeah. RIP yeah. Tumblr. Yeah. Tumblr was such a moment. I never used it. I loved Tumblr. Every girl I've ever known ever. Loved Tumblr. Oh ever. my God. I mean, there's a few people that I know now that are still like relevant on social media that like got their start on Tumblr. They were Tumblr fans. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Not me. What else we got? So we are going on another travel, another travel adventure. Maybe. 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 I thought you booked it already. Yeah, but like we still need to like lock it all in. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. So we are going to Miami. Maybe, Miami, hopefully. hopefully, maybe. I've been to Miami in years, like probably, Same. if we've been there for three years, probably like six years. I haven't been to Miami since- hmm. Since when? Four years ago. Since when, Jeremy? What were you four doing years, in Miami? Five years ago. What was Miami for? Uh, bachelor party. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Except for what was the circumstances of the bachelor party? <laughs> Just to see the guys hang out. Well, it was, it was the week or two after I'd called off the wedding and huh. then went to the bachelor party. And then went to the bachelor party. And I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> what, honestly though, like that couldn't have been better timing. Oh, trust me. When in the same breath that I was telling all of my groomsmen that the wedding was off. Yeah. But don't worry. We're still going to Miami. We're still going to Miami. And all of them were just like, yeah, we're going to Miami. Absolutely. I mean, like that is the ultimate distraction. Like it's not even just like, oh, like we'll get drinks with like the boys and like go like make you feel better about like- the We'll go to the city yeah. that never, ever, ever, ever shuts off. Yes. And there's more food, drink and everything in between you could possibly imagine. And by everything in between, did you mean strip clubs? 
Uh, uh, That's one of those things that could be yeah, in there. <laughs> yeah, that could, that could be in there. It's just, uh, Miami's just a different culture. Yeah. It's very fun. I could never live there. Oh my God, I know. I feel like never. we know so many people that moved there like yeah. over the last like year and a half or that, so too. That 10% state income tax is just all it, yeah. it took for some people. Yeah, seriously to say- It would have to be a hell of a lot higher than 10% for me to move to Florida, but still. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so our conversation in the last couple of weeks has been Airbnb versus hotel. And one of them is correct. <laughs> okay, would you like to state your argument? Yeah, room service. I do love room service. Hotel, period, done. I know. I mean, it's the the services and the amenities that hotels have, hot fire. I the, the when I get to an Airbnb and I the address is weird, it's difficult to figure out how this works and oh, oh, do we have one of these or oh, we don't have one of those. Oh, well, okay. All of that gets mm -hmm. solved by having a hotel. Okay, but when we were in Cabo, would you have rather done a hotel or Airbnb? Hotel. Really? Yeah. Our Cabo setup was sick. And getting food was a nightmare. Oh my God, really? It wasn't that bad at all. Every time I ordered something, it was a crapshoot as to how the person would get there, if they would get there, what, how, like all yeah, of Yeah, but we ate most of our meals out. Right. And cooked. I just like hotels better. Oh my God, wow, I'm shocked. I thought Cabo would have been a no brainer. No. Huh? No. I also feel like there's so much, so much more just like cost effective too. Cause like to stay in something even like one eighth is nice. Okay, and point is, <laughs> we're not talking about cost right now. Uh, so you, why do you like Airbnbs better? I like Airbnbs because of space. Like I love when you get like a whole ass house. So like when we're looking at the Miami hotels, like Miami is not a city like New York where you're gonna get like a little cubby, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Like they're like normal size, I feel like. Right. Um, but for like the same price, you can get like a whole ass penthouse. I feel like Miami is similar to Toronto where there's just like condos on condos on condos there. Ton, and a like, lot of people don't live there all year. No, exactly. So yeah. there's so many of those on Airbnb and they're all like modern and like lofts and these crazy spaces. I mean, if I was gonna throw like a party, I'd want an Airbnb, Yeah, but I'm not throwing a party. I'm sleeping and eating and answering emails and getting out of that hotel. That's the difference. When I travel alone or when I'm not mm -hmm. with you, I spend seconds in the Airbnb or in like my hotel that I'm not out. Mm -hmm. You just have more home base time. Definitely. But even in New York, when we spend very little time in the hotel, when we were in the hotel, we were like dying. Right. But if I was in New York, not with you, I would just, I would have found a spot to like gone, done all my emails and everything. I would just never been in the room. Mm, never, never in the room. I just feel like it's so much money for just like a little tiny, like little, little cupboard. Mm -hmm. I think also when you're in a city like Miami, like Cabo, I understand like it was definitely a pain in the ass to Postmates. Like it was very difficult, Yeah. but I feel like the Postmates thing can be, or the room service thing can be counter. It's about the same delivery time of Postmates for room service and it's much cheaper and the options are much more plentiful. Not that you can't also Postmates to a hotel, but like when you do the Airbnb in a remote area, like I a hundred percent am like- But that's another thing. I don't like to go to places. I don't want to travel to some place to then be in a remote area. I want to be in the middle of it in the coolest place right next to everything so I can walk out and see all the reason that that city's cool. Right, so that actually leans in my favor then of my argument. Like I'm saying when you're in a remote area, I would always hotel because like it's right. not reliable to like do other things potentially. But like in an urban city like Miami, like you can get anything on Postmates or delivery probably in the same amount of time with more variety via delivery than room service. Well, you know, it's Sound off in the comments below, but yeah, I just, to me, the thought of like, if I get there and I gotta get dry cleaning, I don't have to worry about like going mm -hmm. to find one. It's it's just go go do it. If I forget this, they've got it. If I, I just, there's something about the hotel thing that feels like my home base, that the Airbnb feels like I have to like learn the quirks of this house, no it's lock true. myself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely have locked myself out of my fair share of uh, Airbnbs, 100%. Which is a big, big fucking, pain in the ass. I'm not kidding. Last time I was in Paris, I got locked out of the hotel and it was like a scaling window situation. It was not really? good. Really? Yeah, it was not good. It was a hotel? It was an Airbnb. Oh, why? Yeah, see, hotels, again, not good. hotels for sure. <laughs> Definitely should have done a hotel in Paris. Yeah, when you don't Definitely, speak the same language. When you don't speak the same language, sure. yeah, 100%. Remote yeah. areas and areas where you do not speak the mother, yeah. the mother tongue. Yeah, hotels, 100%. But when, you know, Art Basel week, here we come. Here we come. Let's do it. If you're, gonna be our, if you're gonna be in our Basel in Miami this year, hit us up. Probably won't get to respond, but hit us up anyway. I was gonna say, where are you going with this? Unless you're a club <laughs> promoter and your name is Dave Grubman. Okay. He owns all the clubs there. Got it. Got well, it got actually it, more it. restaurants there. Got it. Yeah, he owns like I, my like My clock is just not built for, oh, but you know what? We will be going three hours ahead. So if I just stay on LA time when we go to Miami, I will we're do going much better. Four, it'll be right, one. It'll be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we just stay on LA time in Miami, I'll right. do much better. I can't 
decide if I want to take you to 11 or not, because then it ruins what 11 is to me, but also I want you to experience 11. That felt like partially really mean, but also like not, and I can decide which way to go with that was, on my emotions. Was, I didn't mean it mean. <laughs> okay, so it still came out mean. <laughs> you don't go to 11? Uh, maybe. See, with that attitude, no. You don't get to go with a maybe. Well, no, now that I'm scared, well, you're like, I don't want you to ruin it for me. Like, that's a lot of pressure. No, what if I ruin it for you? I, I was just there at a time in my life when I was young and free and wild and young and, and young and young and also young. And now none of that is the case. And so it's well, just- It's not like, my fault you're old. Well, no, but we are growing more comfortable by the day. <laughs> you know, I still work out, okay? <laughs> I'm growing more comfortable by the day. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't don't drag me into this. Fine. Don't drag me well, into we'll this. We'll find out. We'll see. Okay. All right. We'll see. Well, TBD. We will TBD if we're even in Miami. TBD if we're in a hotel or an Airbnb. TBD if we will make it to eleven. All the things. All the things. You excited for next week? Next week. Yeah. Yeah. It's a week after mom and dad DUI are here. DUI. DUI. Mom and dad DUI. I was DUI. just explaining to someone how like that happens. DUI. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Lord DUI. Lord DUI. That's me. I love Lord DUI. My kids watch her. I know. Like. Well, I don't yeah, sure, whatever. Um, that was a big week. I'm excited. I'm excited. Do you want to say hi to anybody? Say goodbye to anybody? Shout me out? This is it? Uh, Crave Canada, thank you again for picking up my show. Uh, HBO Max, thank you so much for being my show. And thanks, Latvia, <laughs> for being the number one um, territory in the world. Bye. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>